My name is Daniel, and um, I work in applied AI at OpenAI based out of New York. Um, my job is uh, basically to help companies build on top of OpenAI's API and deliver value with our technology. I'm going to spend the majority of our time together today showing you a cool demo focused around agent orchestration. Uh, but I also want to take a moment to give you an insight into um, our investments in agents at a glance this year and share some key lessons that we've learned from our experiences uh, deploying agentic systems in the field with our customers. OpenAI are making a lot of exciting investments this year. We really believe that 2025 is going to be the year of the agents. We think of an agent as an AI application consisting of a model, which has some instructions in the form of a prompt, access to some tools for retrieving information um, and interacting with external systems, all contained with an execution loop whose termination is controlled by the model itself. In other words, an agent is a system that operates with a high degree of autonomy, and the agent itself determines when its tasks have been completed and when its objectives have been met. Folks in the room have probably already used um, our first class agents like Deep Research and Operator and ChatGPT, um, whether it's to condense days of research into minutes or to automate um, idea, um, like tedious tasks. But our enterprise customers are also seeing huge success with custom-built agentic frameworks on top of our models. Uh, this year, uh, we've made building these systems even easier with our newly released Agents SDK and the Responses API. And I want to show you um, just a few clips of what that might look like in a real life scenario. Hello, Mr. Mirza. How was your experience at Sushi to Wine San Francisco last month? Did you enjoy the dinner? It was great. Thank you so much for asking. And thanks for booking that for me. I'm thrilled to hear you had a great time. If there's anything else I can assist you with or any other reservations you'd like to make, just let me know. Actually, now that you mention it, I do have a week of vacation coming up next month, and I was hoping to plan a trip abroad. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Do you have a specific destination in mind? Or would you like some suggestions for your vacation? I would love some suggestions. What's popular in 2025? Preferably somewhere that's warm in June. If you haven't gathered, uh, this uh, demo focuses around an AI concierge, which is powered by OpenAI's real-time speech-to-speech API. And um, it helps customers at a bank plan their lifestyle in a financially responsible way and offer them personalized financial solutions. What you saw just now was that the agent recognized it needed to make a web search in order to answer the user's question uh, about popular travel destinations in 2025. And it was able to do that autonomously um, in the conversation. June is a wonderful time for warm destinations. Here are some popular spots. One, Cancun, Mexico, known for beautiful beaches and vibrant nightlife. Two, Bali, Indonesia, offers rich culture, beautiful temples, and warm temperatures. Three- I've never been to Bali before. That sounds great. Could you help me plan a seven-day itinerary there? I'm going to be traveling with my parents, and they're not very mobile, so please take that into account. If my mom and dad were listening to this, they'd be very upset because they're actually pretty mobile. Um, <laughs> uh, that was just part of the demo. I just had to have that, have that disclaimer. My mom's pretty running after my nephew. My dad's probably jumping up a cliff or cave diving somewhere in Southeast Asia. But anyway, um, this time uh, we made a call out to our itinerary agent, uh, which is powered by um, O3 Mini. Um, and we've seen that reasoning models like O3 Mini are really good at these sort of thinking ahead planning steps, um, extrapolating oftentimes from very limited uh, context or information. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that itinerary together. Gentle Ubud. Visit that sounds Ubud. awesome, actually. Could you please send that to my email and I'll review it in detail later? But this trip does seem a little bit luxurious for my price range. Do you think I can afford it? I've sent the detailed seven-day Bali itinerary to your email. You can review it at your convenience. Now, let's look into the financial aspect to see if it fits your budget. So I want to call out um, something here. The concierge recognized that we needed to call two agents, uh, one to send an email and another one to plan the finances for the trip. And it makes both of those calls in the correct order autonomously. I think one thing that is really valuable about um, the response API that our customers get for free is that it's really designed with agentic systems in mind. This example that I just showed you isn't so interesting because the tool calls aren't necessarily interdependent. But suppose that I'm a busy executive, I'm at a conference, and I want to upload a photo of my conference schedule and ask an agent to find highly rated lunch locations uh, near each of my meetings and then block time off in my calendars. I need to use a vision model to understand the agenda. 
web search to find reservations, and then using the available reservation times that I get back, I need to take uh, those and make the bookings, and then block time in the calendar with um, sufficient travel buffers. The response API that we released recently lets you do all of that in one single API call, where you can orchestrate those tool calls, where the output from one tool call can feed the input for another, and, and that's just a single round trip to the API. Taking a loan to go on vacation, you know what, YOLO, vacation of a lifetime, let's just go for it. So going back to our Bali adventure, it looks like the concierge has recommended. I love your enthusiasm. Let's make trip. it a vacation to remember. I'll proceed with arranging the Wanderlust card loan for you, and you'll soon be on your way to an unforgettable Bali experience with your parents. YOLO indeed. I'm going to be traveling next month, uh, June 15th, uh, for seven days. Uh, could you go ahead and help me book the trip? Cool. I've so, started the reservation process for your Bali trip, set to begin on June 15th. I'll notify you by email once everything is complete. Your unforgettable adventure is just around the corner. So um, our computer using agent, or Kua, um, processes raw pixel data to understand what's happening on the screen. And it uses a virtual mouse and keyboard to complete actions, which is what you're seeing right now. It can navigate multi-step tasks, handle errors, and adapt to unexpected changes exactly like a human would do. This enables Kua to act in a wide range of digital environments, performing tasks like filling out forms and navigating websites without needing specialized APIs. Given a set of instructions, the Kua model can navigate applications very much like a human would do, with the ability to perceive the structure of the UI, reason through steps it needs to take, and then actually perform direct actions like clicking or scrolling or typing, uh, which uh, you can see on the screen right now. One thing I want to uh, call out here is um, that Kua not only correctly inputted the location and the dates for my seven-day trip, it also remembered from way back in the conversation um, that I'm traveling with my parents. Um, so it should, hopefully in just a moment, uh, correctly infer that it needs to book for uh, three travelers as well. And while Kua handles uh, most steps automatically, um, it does seek uh, user confirmation for sensitive actions. Uh, so before it drains my bank account and the little that I have left. Oh, I'm going to be traveling next month, uh, June 15th, uh, for seven days. Uh, could you go ahead and help me book the trip? I now want to take um, a moment to talk through uh, five key insights that we've learned from our experiences building agents alongside our customers. Building end-to-end -end agents is quickly becoming one of the most common use cases that we're seeing in the field. At OpenAI, we're grateful uh, that we get to work with customer teams building these state-of-the-art agentic systems. And we really do expect 2025 to be the year that um, agents really come into play. The year that generative um, AI truly graduates from being sort of an assistant uh, to a coworker um, that works with you. I know that some of the folks in this room are really going to capitalize on that. Um, and I wanted to discuss some of the patterns and also the anti-patterns uh, that we see are most prevalent uh, when developing agent tech systems today. And I want to share some of those learnings with you. First of all, um, abstraction is a tool, uh, not a crutch. Uh, too many teams uh, spend a lot of time picking the right framework. We believe developing agents isn't so much about choosing the best abstraction. It's more about understanding your data, your failure points, and your constraints. I'll give you a quick example. Suppose you're building a chatbot, and you want to add memory management uh, for personalization of your chatbot. You could use an existing framework, which takes your user interactions and summarizes them into a memory bank, and then retrieves them in subsequent conversations. It allows you to move fast, and it unblocks you, and you can get going. But think of all the things that you're losing control over. First, you lose control over how you define a good versus a bad memory and what gets stored in a memory, which can depend a lot on your specific use case. Second, you lose control over uh, memory categorization. Uh, what kind of memories do you want to keep and how do you want to structure them? Uh, do you want to add temporal relevance for memories and so forth? Third, you lose control over the retrieval aspect. Maybe we want to add weightings to retrieve memories based on temporal relevance or seasonality and recency and so forth. Complexity naturally arises from addressing uh, real concerns um, that address uh, customer needs, uh, not from sort of positing all these like theoretical scenarios, uh, which takes us to um, our second point, which is already on the screen, uh, which is start simple. Optimize where needed and abstract only when it makes your system as a whole better. Third, uh, use a network of agents for complex tasks. Orchestrate the handoffs between the agents. 
whilst maintaining stateableness throughout your conversation. Keep your prompt simple and focus directly on the task at hand. Run guardrails in parallel uh, where needed to handle those edge cases. And lastly, next slide, uh, log everything. And this one is like extremely important, as I'm sure many people in this room are aware. Observability and a robust evaluation suite are really critical to building successfully in production. Eval should never be an afterthought when it comes to building agentic systems um, and should really be part of the core solution.